Hi, it's Brad, Laminate Flooring Installation Tech. We're here to talk about cutting the floor, because you will have to cut it to length. Uh, one disclaimer, we always want you to wear eye protection in an N95 dust mask, unless you're using a dustless cutter like you'll see a lot of professionals use. So please cut this product outside your home. I have a couple of blades here. The one that I actually use to cut laminate flooring, you'll see carbide fiber tip and a very high tooth count. Uh, this one, just for comparison purposes only, you see the larger teeth, but they're a smaller count. We want the higher tooth count blade. We want to select the higher tooth count blade, and depending on the size of your saw, this count could go up over 100, and that would be fine. Just remember when cutting the product that the teeth of the blade should come in contact with the face of the product. So whichever way your saw turns, that rule holds true. The teeth of the blade into the face of the product. That reduces chipping. However, chipping is a minor concern because once you cut this product, you've cut off the locking system and that piece is going to go against the wall where that will, edge will be covered with quarter round or trim. So for cutting laminate floor, depending on your job size, you might use more than one blade. Even a carbide fiber tip blade will dull significantly as you cut laminate flooring. If you have a chop saw, a saw where the blade descends directly into the plank, you may see sparks and smoke. That's because the blade is coming in contact with our aluminum oxide wear layer. Aluminum oxide is the second hardest compound in the planet. That's why I always take a couple of high tooth count blades to every laminate job that I go to. Again, keep in mind the safety precautions of eyeglasses and an N95 dust mask when you're cutting laminate flooring. Good luck with your project.